Hello AP Bio students. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the floating leaf disk assay for Lab 4 photosynthesis. Before we get started though, since I'm shooting this at home this weekend, I wanted to introduce you to my dog. So let me go get her. I'll be right back. Shooting, come here. Up, up, up. Okay. Okay, so that's Shundine. She's a blue healer. She's a little spazzy. She's about three years old, and she's a pretty good dog. Yeah, huh? Ooh, girl, you want to see? 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 Yeah, you want to eat the leaf? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good girl. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're back. Let me show you some basic equipment that you'll be using for this lab. This one's probably even easier than the last two labs that you've done, and you can even do this at home with your little brothers and sisters. Okay, the equipment. So you'll need a beaker, okay, a large beaker like this, pretty good. And you'll need plastic cups, at least one. You might have several. If you want to run several trials at once, then I would have several. Uh, syringe, at least five milliliters or bigger, or five cc's or bigger. Hole punch, which is good for the really thick leaves that need a little bit more um, force in order to punch out the leaf disc. Spoon for mixing. You'll have baking soda at the front of the class, and you'll have some measuring spoons to measure out your baking soda. So the first thing you'll do is have to Oops, I forgot. You'll actually need some soap, too. <clears throat> okay, so the point of this particular lab is that you have leaf discs here that you actually make out of something like ivy or spinach or any type of leaf that you want to use. And basically, you'll be, you'll be infiltrating the leaf disc with a soapy solution that has carbon in it. <clears throat> when you put the leaf disc in a water, the disc will drop to the bottom, and then as they photosynthesize, they'll actually rise to the top. So based on the rate of rising, then you'll actually be able to get an indirect measurement of photosynthesis. <coughs> okay, first thing is to get some water in your beaker, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's my 300 mils of water. It doesn't have to be exact, but as long as it's consistent between each trial that you do. It says to go ahead and add an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I want a nice even teaspoon. I'm going to go ahead and tap it in. Ooh. And then a drop of soap. Oops, a little bit more than a drop, but that's okay. You can actually do this experiment without using the soap at all. So we don't need much soap. The purpose of the soap is to reduce the surface tension so that when you're infiltrating the leaves with the solution that it can actually get into each of the little areas where there's um, little pockets of air inside the leaves. So this is ready to go. So now I can go ahead and punch some of my leaf discs. So I've got a ivy leaf here. It should be fresh. It's not obviously dead. It needs to be living. So um, I plucked this recently and we're going to see how well it does. In class I'll probably have you using spinach, but I don't have spinach today. So I'm going to use my hole puncher. I don't want to get the big veins here. I really want to get the green areas that are full of chlorophyll. So I'm going to go ahead and punch about 10 discs. Oops. That last one I got a vein, so I'm going to punch out another one. Okay. Now for 
saving time, if you're doing multiple trials or multiple conditions, you can have more than one cup and you can have someone doing one variable and another person doing a different variable and then that way you'll be set. But the important thing is if, if you're testing, let's say, different intensities of light, you still need to get this disc from the same particular leaf, right? You don't want to get a nice green IV leaf and punch 10 discs out of there and then your friend has an old moldy ivy leaf that they're punching 10 discs out of there that introduces another variable that you're not accounting for. So you want to make sure if you need the same leaf disc between two different cups then you use the same type of leaves and get that from one particular leaf and not two different leaves. Okay, But in this case I'm just showing you how to set up the leaf disc assay so you can go ahead and get started. So I have my syringe I'm going to go ahead and remove the plunger. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and count out my 10 discs and go ahead and drop them into the plunger or the barrel. One, four, Okay, so I have 10 discs here. Oops, dropped one. Get that. I'm going to go ahead and drop them into the barrel. Now remember the, the cells, the plant cells in these leaf discs are actually living, so you don't want to treat them roughly. If you do, then again you're add, adding another variable is that the leaves aren't actually alive, so they're not going to do much for you. I'm going to go ahead and take my my plunger and insert it at the base and then gently go ahead and push out the air but I don't again want to crush my leaves so I'm going to do that gently get as much air space out as possible so that's pretty good so now the leaves are all pretty much at the top so what I'm going to do now is the actual infiltration part and I come over to my beaker and aspirate up a small amount. Okay. The amount isn't particularly all that important as long as you have a small amount of liquid in there. Okay, I'm going to invert it. Okay, so now is the time where I actually um, create a vacuum on here and infiltrate the leaves with the actual solution so that the leaves will actually sink because I don't know if you can see pretty much they're all floating at the top except for one so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and infiltrate I can either go like this or like this and I'll try it either way let's try it like this I'm going to gently pull back on the plunger while still keeping my finger on the top and I'm creating a vacuum in this upper portion here and that will hopefully tease out the air so that the solution will actually replace the air pockets with solution. Okay, so see even after one um, try with the infiltration that many of the discs are already starting to sink. So I'm going to go ahead and push out some air again, try it again. Give it a little shake, it helps get the air out a little bit more. Okay. Go ahead and let off the vacuum. Okay, looks like after two tries, I was a. It looks like after two tries, I was actually able to get all of the discs sunk to the bottom. I don't know if you can see, but they're pretty much sitting on the bottom. That means the air that was in the actual leaves has been replaced with this solution, in this case, which has carbon. Important things you need to look out for is if your solution has turned a green color, it means that you've damaged the leaves and the chlorophyll is actually no longer in the leaves. So you're going to have to throw that away and then repunch 10 fresh discs and then go ahead and re-infiltrate. <clears throat> Okay, so 
Now what you do is you're going to go ahead and put this into a plastic cup. So I'm going to take my cup. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the plunger. I'm going to do this quickly so they don't get stuck up in the um, barrel. So now all of my discs are actually in the cup. I'm going to go ahead and add about three centimeters. solution. So this is the same infiltration solution and I'm going to go ahead and just let them the disc settle at the bottom. So now it's actually ready to use. I can put this under a light source and I'm going to count the number of rising discs over time. Okay what I did here was I got a lamp. Your lamp is going to be one of the table lamps. I'm going to go ahead and put my cup right below the lamp. So it gets maximum exposure. Sometimes the there will be a lot of soap bubbles on the top of the actual solution. And if that's the case, you're going to want to use a glass rod to kind of push the bubbles out of the way because it's affecting the amount of light that's actually getting to the leaves. So I'm going to leave it like this and just kind of keep an eye on it. See what happens over the next 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes and this... There's still no floating leaves, okay, but it takes a little while for photosynthesis to actually take place, the oxygen to build up and to get those leaves to be buoyant again. One thing that you can't forget is that you also need to have a separate cup that's your control. And in your control, instead of your bicarbonate and soap and water, you're just going to have soap and water, okay, one drop of soap and 300 mils of water. And then you're going to use that to infiltrate a new set of 10 leaves, okay? Because you can run the control at the same time as you run this test experiment. And the reason why is that you need to basically see without the carbon source that these are not going to rise as quickly as you would expect them to if they had an active carbon source like the uh, bicarbonate that you're using. Okay, about five minutes in, I'm starting to get some one, some that are actually floating, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and let it sit some more and see if we can get any more to float. Okay, so about after 12 minutes, finally, they all have floated. All 10 are at the top. I've recorded it in my data table, and I'm pretty much done with this experiment. So the assay is pretty easy to use, and again, the assay is a indirect measurement of the rate of photosynthesis using um, a regular light at the in this particular case. When you guys do your own experiments though, that's where the fun begins because you'll get to use any variable that might be interesting to you.